It's like candy. It's candy in a glass. Aloha, folks. Welcome back to Spike's Breezeway Cocktail Hour. I'm drinking a beer, but I'm drinking it out of a 10-pin Pilsner glass. This is the glass that Trader Vic's use. They serve the Trader Vic's Grog, the Potted Parrot, the Bahia, the Shingle Stain, but they also serve beers in it. And I'm drinking a beer right now because, because this is my show. And I can drink a beer before we start the thing, right? Yeah. Hmm. Also, you might notice the new lights that I have behind me. Going forward, we're gonna have a little bit of a hair light. Being a graphic designer and a photographer and a videographer, I like really, it really bugged me that that wasn't lit up for all these episodes. So the 63rd episode or whatever this is, we finally have that light back there. The 10 pin Pilsner glass is a glass that Trader Vic's used. Tonight we're making a cocktail purely because of the glass that it was served in. Not this one, a different one. And I'm super excited about this because we only did this like a year ago or something. So we're gonna bring back the lady cocktail glass, but she's in the freezer right now chilling. So we're gonna make a cocktail from Trader Vic's. And this cocktail is found on page 259 of the Trader Vic's Bartender's Guide Revise from 1972. It's called the White Coral. It's a simple drink and from the ingredients you go, yeah, this is probably kind of a dessert drink. I don't have any cutting boards. I don't have any fruit. I don't have any squeezers. This is uh, quite the anomaly of a cocktail episode. Before I get into this cocktail, I wanna thank Marius and Leandro from the Educated Barfly for coming by last episode. We made that incredible mutiny from the Mai Kai. It's just an incredible cocktail. If you haven't seen that episode, go back and take a look at it. It's super good. Okay, so let's get onto this cocktail. We know that it's a Trader Vic's cocktail because it has this little TV icon here, which means that it's proprietary to the Trader Vic's name and to Victor Bergeron. So this cocktail is called the White Coral. There's only three ingredients. And for this cocktail, we will be using Carnation Evaporated Milk, Triple Sec, and Kahlua. So judging by the ingredients and the glass that it's served in, this is certainly a dessert drink. I'm excited to try it. This is an odd combination. Like I get the Kahlua and I get the milk because they kind of live together in like a milky, chocolatey way. And then the Triple Sec. Should be interesting. So let's jump into it. <laughs> don't get into that. Don't be one of those guys. Okay, so I guess, first of all, it says shake well, so we're gonna go ahead and shake this. I, I wish I had more to contribute to you guys about this. I, I don't know anything about dessert drinks, really, so we'll just follow the directions and see what happens. We're gonna poke a hole in both sides of this thing and pour half an ounce of evaporated milk into this. I don't know what evaporated milk is, but it's very creamy and very thick. Half an ounce of evaporated milk. A robust fruity treat made from Valencia oranges, curacao oranges, and lemons. That's what triple sec is. I had no idea. Hmm. Half an ounce of triple sec. Okay. Hmm. And one ounce of Kahlua. Now, if you're not familiar with Kahlua, Kahlua is from 1936. It is a rum and coffee liqueur. It smells delicious. I mean, really, it's good for coffee. There was a story in my high school that like the, the Dean of Students would put Kahlua in his coffee. Maybe. Okay, into the glass. I just brought our lovely lady glass out of the freezer. So she's all chilled and ready to go. We'll set her over here for the moment. We're gonna fill a tin with ice cubes. And we're using ice cubes because we don't want a ton of water in this thing. If we were using pebble ice, we'd introduce a lot of water into the drink. The mixture goes into here, a good smack. Now Leandro from the Educated Barfly says to shake from your heart. All shaken up. The tin is nice and frosty. Let's put our lady in the middle here. And for this cocktail, I'm going to strain and I'm going to double strain. And by doing this, you really get a nice mouth feel out of the liquid. Wow, look at that chocolatey goodness right there.
And so from Trader Vic's Bartender's Guide Revised, this is the White Coral. Let's give this uh, girl a taste here. Wow, okay, it's chocolatey. It's chocolatey, but the triple sec does something different. There's notes of orange. I feel like it's like drinking a Cadbury egg. Definitely a dessert drink. It's definitely chocolate and milk. Well, and orange, like an orange liqueur. It's good, it's really, it's really good. What is there, a zillion calories in this thing? Man, that's so good. But you can really taste the triple sec. Even though there's only a half an ounce in there, you can definitely taste the orange notes coming through. So going by the, would I order this in a bar? No, I wouldn't order this in a bar. Where I would order this would be in the dining room of the Beverly Hills Trader Vic's after a delicious Asian meal. And then especially if it's gonna be served like this in the lady glass, like how, how are you gonna be upset by that? You could get a souffle or you can get something like this. And this will get you buzzed. So like who's ordering a souffle? What a beautiful glass, an incredible cocktail. Uh, I would say that this is a, this is a good one. This is certainly a good one. I'm, a, <laughs> I'm afraid I'm gonna have to make another one of these things because it's, it's so good, but it's probably like drinking a candy bar, you know? I really should have finished my beer before I finished this thing. Drinking a beer now after this is gonna be disgusting. It's so good, it's so sweet, but it's like, I guess I should mention that in our store, we do have Breezeway Cocktail Hour stickers, coasters, and a few of these incredible Breezeway Cocktail Hour zombie glasses left. So if you are interested in one of these things, act fast because these will go quickly. Also, if you'd like to join the Patreon in the $10 tier, you'll receive this rad little enamel pin. Also, you will get first dibs on any merch that we release at all, so you don't have to worry about trying to beat somebody else out for uh, for merch, especially as the time for our Tiki Mug keeps getting closer and closer. And I did want to thank you guys for joining us today. This was born out of an unfortunate situation, and 60-something uh, weeks later, we're still going, so I do appreciate it, sincerely. Man, that's so good. That's so good. Oh, wow. I think we have to make another one of these. They're so small. They're so small that you have to like, am I not gonna make another one? Of course I am. Okay, quickly though. It's really so simple. If you don't have this stuff at home, you should get this stuff and you should make it at least once. Make it for like a special occasion. Half an ounce of, of this weird milk stuff, a half ounce of triple sec, and an ounce of Kahlua. Dude, it's so easy. Like, how can you not make two of these? And a double strainer. Oh, come to me, white coral. Amazing. So I hope you guys enjoyed the episodes with Educated Barfly and with Ed Hamilton. And uh, we have all kinds of guests slated for, for the show. So more entertainment coming up. Nowhere else on the internet will you find such traditional tiki cocktails made in the glass they were served in at Trader Vic's in the 1960s with the proper cocktails. Aloha folks, thank you so much for joining us once again on Spike's Breezeway Cocktail Hour. Please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you aren't already, and we will see you in the next cocktail video. Aloha. So good. Dude, that's so good. So I thought I'd start the, the so I thought, blah, 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 potted parrots? What was that, an airplane? From 1974. Or? 1972. It's called... It's called... Oh, I wonder, if, I wonder if I have a picture of it. No menus in there. Okay, hold on. Triple sec. Fuck off. My god. Come to me, white cooler. Come to me, white. Come to me, white cooler. Oh my god, I can't see it. Oh, there it goes. During the recording of this video, it is Tiki Oasis. It's the first Tiki Oasis I haven't been to in like a decade. 
It's kind of weird. It's kind of weird to see people posting photos and videos from Tiki Oasis and not being there. Not after like all these years. And I think I, I think I first went to the third Tiki Oasis. And then I think I played the fourth one or something like that in Palm Springs. It's a weird deal. I should also say that like 11 years ago, 2010, my band, the Hula Girls released this record at Tiki Oasis. It's like a big deal. We were on the main stage. We had people singing along. It was a good time to be a Hula Girl. Also, by the way, the name The Hula Girls was much more creative before we had go-go dancers. It was just like uh, four dudes named The Hula Girls. I got that idea from the Lazy Cowgirls and like the New York Dolls and all these. I thought it was funny at the time. Of course, that was like 12 years ago. Dude, that's so good. It's so good. So a few episodes ago, we had my buddy Matt Means from Anaheim Rod and Custom on the show and he shared with us his Cuban themed hot rod that he called uh, Poppy Cho. Poppy Cho? Poppy Cho? If you were at Tiki Oasis and you saw Poppy Cho, leave a message in the comments below. I would love to hear about you seeing the hot rod and what you thought about it. And Cause it's really a wild design for a hot rod, like the crazy colors. But uh, yeah, good dude, cool car. You know what this glass reminds me of? The early days of Tiki Oasis, when they moved from Palm Springs to the Crown Plaza Hotel in San Diego. It's before room parties were a thing at Tiki Oasis. And if you don't know what Tiki Oasis is, it's like a big gathering of Tiki fans. There are talks on rum and cocktails and Tiki culture. There are all kinds of bands and a pinup contest for the most beautiful women in Tiki. It's like, it's rad. There's photographers shooting models all over the place. It's yeah, it's, it's like a really cool cultural experience. So as the event has grown, there have been these room parties and the Hula Girls have played a bunch of the room parties. They're usually put on by, by private people or by people who own tiki bars or they decorate the whole room into like a, really into this like incredible tiki experience. Sometimes they have DJs spinning 45s and rock and roll and rockabilly and surf and exotica. We actually played a room party for the guy who owned Tiki Cat, which is now the same owner of Max's but it was the Hula Girls, the Untouchables, and Agent Orange, and another band from Vegas. Like crazy, right? In a hotel room, yeah. But the reason that I bring that up is because this glass reminds me of something, of the early days, and before those room parties had turned into a gigantic deal, I remember just like stumbling up, I was like walking the hallways, and I heard like really loud surf guitar. And I was like, what the hell is going on? So I go walk into this hotel room and I'm like, uh, and I kind of peek in and there's a full band in this hotel room. And I was like, what, what the hell is going on here? I walk in, right? And uh, it's a girl hula hooping topless. Yeah, to surf music. And people are politely standing around and sitting on the floor and sitting on couches and stuff, watching this happen. And I walked in and I was like, uh, I'm like, Am I cool? And everybody's like, yeah, come in. Okay. So I'm sitting there watching like one of the raddest surf bands. Turns out to be the Swank Bastards. Buddies of mine now, like now. And, and the girl hula hooping was Miss Zandora LaVey. She is an incredible pinup. Um, she's an incredible alt model and fetish model. And like a great hula hoop performer. So surf music. Good times. I miss those times. Now they have these room parties, right? And you have to get there two hours early and you line up down this big hallway. I don't know how it is now because this is, they've changed locations again. But you would line up down this big hallway if you didn't know somebody who was putting the event on. And then like you were lucky if you got in. And then once you got in, there was like a zillion people in each hotel room. I, I just expected one of the room floors to collapse eventually and they never did. Even when we had the untouchables in a hotel room full of people. You know, like ska music, it's like everybody's bouncing up and down. You could feel the floor flexing. It was a wild thing, like wild experience. But nobody ever got hurt, seriously. And um, yeah, good times. I miss that. I hope, I hope we get back to that soon. Hell, maybe it's happening right now. And I'm sitting in the breezeway by myself with my lady glass, thinking about Zandora. 